So today we will try to write a four-part fugue on the Usta sequencer to demonstrate how the four tracks can interact with each other in a structure that is not strictly dependent on the idea of uh, looping patterns. So the fugue was a compositional style popular in the Baroque era where several independent voices carried on uh, different melodies that tied together to create a complex harmonic structure. Now these melodies had strict rules and uh, precise roles both in the harmony and in the melodic development of the piece. So they had the names uh, such as uh, subject or counter subject or answer and we are not diving too much into that today but the point is that the harmonic structure was almost a sort of byproduct of the melodic development and how these voices, as we usually call them, uh, are uh, vowen together. So writing a fugue is clearly beyond my capabilities, so we are going to rely on an already existent fugue, which is one of the counterpoints written by uh, Johann Sebastian Bach in its Art of Fugue. Now, the cool thing is that Bach didn't specify which instrument should have played this uh, series of fugues, and um, I like to think that we can use our modular synthesizer as well. So, as you can see, here we have four voices, soprano, alto, tenor and bass, and uh, we're going to use the first counterpoint. The first voice is the alto, and uh, it is exposing the subject, and then, and then the soprano comes along, followed by the bass, and the last to join the team is the tenor. And you can see that as every voice enters the composition, they are playing the same um, melodic uh, material. So, how to approach uh, such a piece, how to translate such a piece to the language of the Usta sequencer? Well, I think that the first thing that we need to do is, of course, tune our voices. So, I have set up uh, four tracks. I label them um, yellow, green, blue and red following the order of uh, soprano, alto, tenor, and bass, and they are mirrored on the um, CGM. So my idea, one of the ways that we can use to tune our oscillators is to create a one note pattern and uh, um, let it play an A4 and then clone the track so that now all the four oscillators are technically playing the same note. Of course they aren't, so I'm gonna tune them and to add some more early music vibes, I'm gonna tune them to A415. And there we go. Okay, so once we have tuned our Usta, we can create a new project. Okay, I have already patched my gate B, gate A tra gate A channel of track two to control an envelope to control the VCA because track two is what we will start with. Uh, now, before writing the the piece, we need to go through the score and look for the shortest possible note, which in this case is the eighth note. And we must even take a look at the pauses as well because. The shortest note is what will correspond to one time unit per each stage, so what we will define through the ratio parameter. And uh, since we cannot have shorter notes than this one, we must double check and make sure, because once we will be already halfway through, it will be quite painful to start from the beginning. So the first voice uh, uh, to play is track two which is our alto track. And I will use an external controller paired with the composition mode, which will open the gate. Now this is a super low note, you won't be able to hear it, but I'm gonna patch my CV to the CVA input and my gate to the auxiliary gate input. And in this way, I will be able to type my notes. Now, of course, the most challenging part is reading the soprano, alto and tenor clef, but slow but steady, we will get 
to the to the end. I think I'm gonna play. Uh, I think I'm not gonna uh, write the whole uh, fugue. Just uh, a few bars until the all the tracks come together and play and create the counterpoint. So let us start. Select CVA. Our first note is a D. Now in this case I must make sure that I have enough uh, time units in the stage, but of course yes, this will be 6 time units, this high G, and then we have F, E, D, and I think that we can stop here since we have a pause and a long piece where the um, alto is not singing or playing. And now comes we've we've almost entered all, um, almost four patterns. And now comes the tedious part of defining the note length. So the first five notes are four time units each. Then now this is um, four plus one, and uh, then we have one. That's it. Now we need to proceed to the second voice, which is our uh, soprano. I'm gonna set another envelope for this one. And uh, now, as you can see, the soprano enters four bars later, so we need to enter a rest that corresponds to four bars which is four uh, which is like 16 quarter notes and uh, since our time unit is one eighth note I need two stages empty and uh, then from this stage here I can start to play with my uh, first track. Now, this is what I want to, to stress. Um, this approach forces us to think and to work with the sequencer independently of from the, the pattern loop. So, for example, if I play my track 2, I need to enter the gate as well. Now, of course, uh, I am still looping on pattern one, and um, the tempo is not very exciting per se, but if you see what happens on track one, and now this is where my track one starts. So I'm not forced to wait or to uh, use empty patterns so that the playhead is in the same position. Usta allows us this kind of flexibility. Let us then go back to pattern one of track one. Select the CVA and start to enter the notes. Different key. And this is it. Now I'm gonna repeat the procedure of defining the stage length for my second track. Now for example in this case, since I have two tight notes across a bar, I don't really don't need to use two stages since I have enough time units. So I'm just gonna set four time units for this B across two bars. There. Now I think that now I'm curious to to hear if our tracks are playing correctly. So I'm gonna set my 
um, pattern loop, my last pattern to let's say 10 and apply the same setting to all the tracks. Okay, now I may want to set my gates to a longer value on all the patterns. So I'm gonna start with pattern 1, 2, 3, 4, go up to 5, you never know. There. And the same for track 2. All the patterns. Three. Then I'm, I will play with uh, articulation later on, perhaps. And um, you can find a video on articulation here or in the description. So let's hear how it sounds like. And you can also hear a low tone on track one, which depends on the fact that I entered some gate highs also for the stages that are supposed to be pauses. But we will fix that later on throughout this video. And really they are going independently. There, we can move on. Let's move on to the bass and then we will have the tenor and uh, it's almost over. So let's select track four and we must count how many bars we need to wait for it to start. So we have to wait eight bars before our bass join the fugue. Now, since uh, here on track one, two stages were four bars, it means that in track four we must enter four empty stages of 16 time units each. And we can start from here. So let us enter the bass line. And that was the bass. Let's enter the duration. So the bass is done, let's move on to track 3, which is our tenor. Uh, the tenor has to wait quite a long time before entering, because it's 8 plus 4, so it's 12 bars. And we were gonna do the same trick. So these are 4 bars, these are 8, and these are 12. So six stages of, 12, of 16 time units each. And then... And that's it. Since the tenor plays just... Uh, uh, enters at the, at the end of our sample. And then we are going to edit its values. I think that we just stopped here. And uh, of course I will populate the, the gates, except for this one. You can exit the composition mode. And since I am done with the composition mode, I'm gonna stop the video and clean the setup a bit. Okay, got rid of my controller. Now all my tracks are set and I can think about speeding up the tempo. I can assign, for example, 134 to all the tracks and they will move uh, in sync. And track 4 is still waiting. Now, of course, this is uh, this almost sounds like an arcade game, so we need to uh, play with some with the tools that we have to add some more expressiveness. For example, we can well, of course, we can add some reverb. We can add a little bit of swing to all the tracks 
just like a 4%. Let's see how it sounds like, so that they will drift a little bit apart. Mm -hmm. We can use some tricks. So, for example, I can play with the orchestration and change my alto voice to Renzo's final output instead of using it for the bass. This will allow me more ways of playing with its timbre. Now, for example, I can use the CVB of track 2 to control the wave folder level. So, for example, I can set up different CV values to create crescendos and diminuendos and patch the CVB of track 2 to my wave folder CV input, like this. a sharper tone on both my oscillators like this envelope here so I'm gonna give it more release perhaps I can give some attack to all of my envelopes and a longer decay and play perhaps with shorter gates on all my tracks one two three four I think that I'm gonna switch the waveform that I used for the tenor voice and I think I'm gonna move from Branson's Sawtooth to a mellower triangle wave and then I'm gonna make sure that all my CVB voltages of my alto track are set to the green color so that the modulation of the wave folder and so of the overall timbre of this voice will be more of a fluctuation rather than a series of stepped values in sync with the notes. And while I was here I also removed the two gate high signals from the initial rest stages of my soprano track. This is the final result after fine-tuning the oscillators waveforms and uh, envelope shapes and times. And uh, we also added a little bit of reverb just to glue everything up. <laughs> 